Well, howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Let me tell you, things have been pretty hectic around here. Uh, as you know, I've been spending the better part of the week putting timing together on this Lexus LS400. <clears throat> and unfortunately I, got the, I, fortunately, I got the job done. Everything worked great, but about 30, 40 miles into a test drive, the water pump failed and it began to leak. So I was able to get a refund and all that other stuff and went ahead and got another water pump. And um, I also got a steel gasket with this water pump. So so uh, that's pretty cool and all that other stuff. Uh, in the meantime, as you know, I still got a wife and four kids to feed. So I've accepted in uh, another diagnosis here. <clears throat> and so what we're looking at is a 2000-2001 Lincoln LS. It's got the V8, so it's a 3.9 liter engine. And uh, the complaint on it is that it's just not running correct at all. Uh, hesitation, loss of power, flashing check engine lights, and then also when you give it the gas upon acceleration. And uh, I have also noticed a little bit upon deceleration, sounds like there's some trash inside of the engine. Uh, it's hard to explain, like it's a diesel. It sounds like a diesel, like a rock grinder almost. And so one of the things that uh, the Lincoln LS is notorious for, uh, the 3.0 and the 3.9 liter engine, the V6 and the V8, are the dual overhead cam timing chain tensioner going bad because it's made out of plastic. And you'll get knocking, ticking, rattle noise out of, uh, out of the valve covers. And so I used my mechanic stethoscope and listened and sure enough was able to pinpoint the knocking noise is coming out of somewhere in this area so i'm in the process of at least removing this valve cover so i can take a peek in the meantime i'm also in the process of going over everything and anything that could possibly cause this engine to run funny by the way there are no check engine lights and there is no freeze frame data there is no indication that there's ever been a problem with this vehicle per the computer so but it does run a little funky and it does knock and it does does make noises so uh, as i'm getting down into it one of the things that i've noticed is these valve covers are leaking and i wouldn't be surprised if i pull some coils or some spark plugs find a little bit of oil on them uh see here this discoloration is due to a seep and a seep will eventually turn into a leak so that's that's pretty straight up right there uh, also something i noticed now it's not on the passenger side but as i'm working in here on the driver's side, a work, I'm working on getting my coils pulled out, and I notice, let me see, so this coil has a snap clip that snap clips that connector, snaps that connector into place, right? Well, look at this one. Watch this one. That one has no snap clip, and as a matter of fact, I found this one it's not, you know, it, it's the re that snaps into place for a reason, and it's a tight fit in there. And this one is backed off, and then back in here, we've got another one with the proper snap clip. But the one in the very far back, right there, watch this no snap clip. So we've got two spark plug coil connectors on our wiring harness here that the clip has been broken off okay and that right there aside from the fact that it makes a makes a noise that has us going in and looking at the timing ten, uh, tensioner that right there could be the cause of a lot of problems could have just a slight bad connection just enough to short a coil out so that the spark isn't as strong. There's still a spark, but maybe the spark isn't as strong. Uh, and so you're gonna see slight loss of power. You're gonna see bad gas mileage, all kinds of stuff. Um, whenever I find things like this, or a lot of times I'll find coil connectors and I'll also find fuel injector connectors that won't, you know, somebody's been in there before messing with them or something, broke the clip off and instead of buying a new connector and soldering it in, just decided to replace it. I've actually seen broken clips like this uh, that people have zip tied back together. So uh, 
that there's a repair right there that needs to be made. You just need to buy some new connectors, cut the wire out, solder in new connectors there. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it. I'm going to move forward. I want to get some coils removed and see if we have oil on them. I think I'm just going to focus mainly on this side since my main goal is to get this lifted up so I can take a peek at the timing. Okay, so as we move forward investigating this, I'm going to show you what I found on a couple coils already. But as I move forward, I want to show you something. See if you can get in here. And I don't know if you can see it or not. But bottom line is this coil up yeah, there. See? Look at that. Okay. I just pulled that coil out with its stud that, the, uh, that it bolts it down into. Okay, so at this point... This valve cover, you see here, you've got a stud here, or right there. It's a hollow stud, and that's where the uh, that's where that little bolt is gonna screw into, and it's gonna hold that coil down. But look at look at this one. I got to working on it, and at first I thought somebody didn't tighten down. No, that's not it. That's bad. That's bad right there. And so that coil will never torque down, and it will never stay in place. And you can tell that it has not been firing correctly because look at that end. All right, so honestly, the only way to fix that is get, at this point, go ahead and get a new valve cover. So this went from, so at this point, we definitely need to do valve cover gaskets. Uh, they're not as bad as I thought. When they get bad, you know, you can see right here. Look at right here. You can see where this thing's been shortened out. All right, so definitely going to need a new valve cover gasket on this side. I don't know, man. I mean, you know. What could you do? I don't know. Somebody may try to glue that in back in. I don't know. JB weld it back in. I wouldn't risk it. At, at this point, it's obvious this valve cover is getting wore out. So, yeah, I think definitely going to need a new valve cover. So, let's go ahead and get this last coil pulled. As a matter of fact, while I'm here. Nope, that one's getting snug. Okay, so let's get this last one pulled and see what we see. Okay, folks. So... At this point, I am finished with this diagnosis. Uh, again, the complaints are there's been loss of power, hesitation. Uh, when you give it the gas upon acceleration, you kind of hear this like terrible noise, like there's some type of trash, grinding, diesel, diesel noise. Uh, the engine sounds like a diesel engine. Um, but there's no check engine lights or anything that I saw with my computer. No freeze frame data. The car just seems like it's off just a little bit and it's just not running right the first things that i found that need to be addressed are going to be things like our uh wire harness for our coils we've got a couple coils here that don't have connectors on them okay and i want to show you something on the coils now we've got one coil first of all these coils are not all the same okay We've got some that have stickers on them, and then we have some that don't. If you can see that right there. And so these are obviously not the same coils. The one thing about coils is, is if you change them out, uh, what you want to do is you want to replace them all. Um, instead of just replacing one or two at a time, it's really best to replace coils all, all at once. About every 100,000 miles is, one you, is, is when you want to replace coils. Now, not only is this coil missing its sticker, and I don't know if you can see it, but it also looks like it has a crack in the top of it, just a hairline crack. And I don't see it. Uh, it's right there at the tip of my fingernail. Okay, but for this sticker to come off of here, this sticker is glued on here pretty good with adhesive. So for this sticker to come off of here, that tells me that this coil is getting hot. Now look at the way this coil has been firing. All right, look at that. Okay, so that's the coil that's up front. Now let's look at another coil. 
Okay, and again, it's it's the same type of coil. It's pretty old. At least it looks pretty old. And look at the way this coil's been firing. All right, and this is the one that you can see is all burnt out down the side of it as well. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, we definitely need to replace coils. Uh, coils are expensive, so if we're going to do coils, I would, I would really like to do all four, all eight, uh, four coils on that side. These coils obviously have never been changed, it doesn't look like, because these are all matching and all the same as these two on this side. These are the only two coils that look different. So uh, go ahead and change all four coils. And, uh, and I was told spark plugs were done a year ago, so we can probably save the spark plugs. Go ahead and do valve covered gaskets and this valve cover here is wore out. Uh, okay, and it's it's got stuff missing. Like I said, you could possibly glue that back together. I wouldn't do it on a professional level. I would not glue that back together. I'd call it as it is, because if that's starting to come out and mess up, you know, this is plastic. So if that's the way it is, it's time for a new valve cover. And actually, I believe new valve covers, it, it, it'll come as a kit. And I believe if you get new valve covers uh, through Ford, you also get new gaskets. I'm, don't quote me on this yet, but I'm actually pretty sure that you got, you have to get these valve covers through Ford. So, so there you go. The coils, the uh, coil connectors, all that could definitely be causing the symptoms. But what is the main culprit? Well, like I said, these vehicles, uh, this and the Jaguar, this engine is notorious uh, and well known for breaking timing guides. And so sure enough, I'm pretty proud of myself. I called it, went ahead and spent the time to check it. And there you go. That, my friends, is not supposed to be like that. That is a broken timing guide right there. And you can see where it's broken right here. It's broken off. I'm pretty sure I hopefully will find the plastic piece down in there somewhere, down inside the engine somewhere. If not, uh, no big deal. Hopefully the engine chewed it up and spit it out somewhere, but I'm pretty sure I'll find plastic pieces and stuff down in there. And so there you go. So because it's plastic here, you can see this piece is plastic. What happened? You see it has a lip on this side and that goes up against there. Okay. Well, it was this side that broke. All right. And so this has caused this to, to slip. Now it's very possible that if I do get into this job, once I start getting into the timing of it all, uh, it's very possible we could even find that timing has jumped a little bit. Let me wipe my camera off real quick. And so there you go, folks. New coils, possibly spark plugs, but since they're only a year old, um, we could leave those alone. But definitely new coils, definitely a couple new uh, coil connectors. And the big deal, the thing that's really going to fix the car is going to be a new timing guide and in order to replace that timing guide everything that you see has to come off we will have to take everything apart to get into the timing and get that done so there you go folks uh just one second my kiddo's hollering at me so i'll be right back all right so i double check procedure on this one and the only reason ultimately to open this up to fix this job is to go in there and see if we can find where the plastic piece that broke off might have gone down to. But I suspect it's actually been running for a while like that. It's possible the timing chewed it up. It's just turned into nothing now at this point. Uh, it could be down in the in the sump or in the oil pan somewhere. I don't know. But um, uh, bottom line is is after checking procedure, we can go ahead and change this tensioner just by pulling this camshaft out and changing it and double checking timing on the exhaust cam and all that other stuff. So we don't necessarily have 
to break the whole engine open. So that's definitely going to save a lot of time and money. So, all right, folks. Well, there you have it then. Uh, eight new coils, a couple of new coil electrical connectors, and a new timing tensioner. And uh, should see this Lincoln get back on the road and uh, get back into top running shape. So I'm going to put all that, all that together and work on executing this job. In the meantime, while I'm waiting... I will be finishing this Lexus tonight. So thanks, everybody, for coming out and hanging out and watching me and supporting me. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.